Now you're going to have to educate me because I don't really know anything about Blattner Energy. What is it that you do? Well, we're a national wind and solar installer. We're, on the issue. We're, we're in Avon. Uh, we've been there for probably 50 years. We're a 110-year-old company. Yeah, still privately held. Okay. But um, our customers are all private, and we used to do a variety of things many years ago, but now we just do strictly energy-related. Transmission work, solar, and wind. Okay. Uh, I just uh, saw a really cool news report about Insight Brewery in the Twin Cities. They're yes. going to all, they're going to power the brewery with wind. What sure. Or no, with solar. I'm sorry, solar? with solar. Yeah, they can do either. I, I, a lot of clients, a lot of our projects we build now are corporate buyers of all the power. The Amazons, the Google, uh, the Walmart, all, all that's all privately contracted power now. The, the big corporations are really getting on board with renewable and going direct and getting their own. So it's pretty interesting. So rather than regulations or policies, do you think that the marketplace will drive the emergence of that type of energy? Is that oh, absolutely. Seeing? The price point on wind and solar in comparison to fossil fuel is lower. So economics alone, and you can look at climate change for free, but the economics alone will continue to be a bigger and bigger driver. We, we can't stand completely on our own, but by the end of 2020, that's when the um, tax credits are designed to phase out, and the industry will be in a perfect position to move along economically on its own, on its own merits of clean energy and low cost. Okay. Well, when you speak with lawmakers at an event like this, do you talk about uh, the, the other side of it, the policy decisions and the regulations that might have held the industry back in the past? Or do you have confidence that economics alone will, will get it moving the way it should? No, we do try and help them because there's things that, for instance, the state of Minnesota can do in advance. If it's inevitable that renewables are going to be a prominent position because of economics, there's things that the state of Minnesota can do to advertise to businesses who are going to be in the renewable business that this is a place that they believe in renewables. And they can tell uh, by, by signaling policies that we're going to build 30% of our power by 2030 or 40% or 50%. I mean, Minnesota has done that in the past and it has led to a, a, a big increase in jobs and opportunities for companies inside Minnesota. Right. Now, we'd like to see them do it again because at the end of the day, it costs nothing, but it benefits a lot because the economics are coming anyway, but you can get a jump on the jobs when those who are looking to build jobs are looking for places, where should I put my business? Right. And right. you tell them that how the state feels and they come in early. They, they come here instead of going to Iowa. There's thousands and thousands of manufacturing jobs in Iowa right now that weren't there back when Minnesota first considered raising the RPS. And we hesitated for a few define, years. You're going to have to define that for me, RPS. Uh, uh, that renewable portfolio standard that, that, that we have in the state. We hesitated here for a few years while these key companies were looking for places to build. And they built just across the border in Iowa. And those are the kind of things that are opportunities and that, that I'd like to see the state of Minnesota uh, be looking forward uh, in advance and, and try and get what the most we can from Minnesota. We certainly wouldn't want to think that Iowa is more progressive than we are. We wouldn't want that. <laughs> we got to be careful about that. That's right. Uh, what about you as an individual? Why is it worth it for you to be here? What's, what's, what's your takeaway of this event? On this event? Yes. Well, it, it is an opportunity to um, remind the legislators that we are a local business, we're a Minnesota business, uh, we have many of their constituents who work for us. We have thousands of employees across the country, we have hundreds of employees in Minnesota, and they really care about whether or not their legislator is involved in what they do for a living. They, they look at climate as a bigger picture. They know the prices and the competitiveness of us. And so they're pretty sensitive to when decisions are made in a direction that's counter to what they believe is best for the state.
So we like to invite the, the legislators to come to our office. We, we have we have a, a new office. It's really uh, efficient. It's a, it's a platinum level building. We like to invite them. I think our employees like to hear that they're coming. They like to see them there. They like even if they don't get to meet them, they like knowing that their legislator stopped in and talked to the leadership of this company. And so I'm here to try and encourage them to do that. Right. And don't you think it's nice that we were invited here? Yes. I mean, and everybody that I've talked to from that side of the, of the, of the I don't want to call it a fence, that side of the bar, they're yeah. really glad to see real people. Yes, yes. I, I think it's a mutual situation here for, for them and us. They, like our perspective in an environment like this is sort of a fresh voice. Yeah. So what's the most, what's the most fun you've had so far? Well, I mean, I, not, not in your life, but in this. No, in, in, tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I, I met a lot of interesting people. You know, we, we don't do as much business as you might think with central Minnesota businesses. I mean, we, we buy a lot of local that we can, but because we're national, um, there are some things that are best positioned out in, in various states. But when we come here, it's surprising as to how many other businesses in central Minnesota can offer us something that we can incorporate and, and buy here instead of going out. So the more we get involved with the chamber, it's really been a positive thing. And we've, we've been really only involved in the chamber probably for five or six years, uh, even though we've been in St. Cloud forever. And, and that, that's been unfortunate. So this is, it's, Teresa's done a great job of bringing us in, plus the chamber's a great place to get access to politicians. And so you, you never want to pass up that opportunity. So it, it's a mutually benefit item. I, I hope Latner is, is benefiting St. Cloud Chamber. I'm sure that they are, because Gail Ivers pointed me specifically toward you. No. Oh. <laughs> right? So you're, you're probably a star, and you don't even know it. No, I doubt that. Okay. I doubt that. Well, I appreciate your time, Doug. No, you're welcome. Thanks for your statements. They were very good. Yep.